Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anna Kapuscinska. I work as a software engineer at Isovalent. And today I will give a talk about networking um, and also observability. But uh, let's start with networking because uh, Isovalent, in general, what the company is mostly known from is a um, project uh, called Cilium that uses EVPF for networking in Kubernetes and not only. So let's start with quick networking 101 in three slides. Um, it will be very basic just to make sure that we are all on the same page and are using the same terminology. Uh, when people talk about computer networks, uh, they usually refer to the OCI model. And in this model, uh, there are seven layers from physical up to the application layer. Um, each layer builds on top of a uh, layer below. So the idea is like um, the layer four will wrap data uh, from layer three in some way and define protocols on top of layer three. Uh, now, this is a model, a theoretical model, and it's not exactly aligned with reality. Like nobody really remembers what layers five and six are. Uh, but uh, many people remember what are layers three, four, and seven because these are very commonly used terms. So let's take a closer look at the three of them. Um, layer three is the network layer where we operate on IP addresses, IPv4 or IPv6. Layer four is on top of it and it's the transport layer. Uh, two main protocols on this layer are TCP and UDP. And the layer, layer seven is the application layer. Uh, there are many layer seven protocols. Uh, the most known, some of the best known are HTTP, Kafka, or DNS. Um, and uh, layer seven builds on top of layer four. So HTTP and Kafka use TCP under the hood, DNS uses UDP. Now, uh, layer seven has many protocols because they are serving completely different um, end user application uh, level needs. Uh, some people might be wondering why there are two uh, layer four protocols. And uh, well, this is my favorite explanation of, of why. So, and of difference between two main TCP, two main layer four protocols, TCP and UDP. Um, in TCP, how the communication looks like, how services talk to each other, is that they go like that. Do you want to hear a TCP joke? Yes, I do. Are you ready to hear a joke? Yes, I am, and so on and so forth. It's verbose, it's super verbose, but thanks to that verbosity, uh, we can have reliability. So TCP is uh, resilient to um, for example, packets coming in incorrect order or duplicated or missing ones. Um, UDP is not like that. UDP is simply, this is a UDP joke and I don't care if you get it or not. That's it. That's the whole uh, UDP communication. Uh, of course, it's faster but less reliable. Okay, so that was uh, networking 101 in three slides. And um, these days we have Kubernetes. And um, networking in Kubernetes is, well, um, it's widely perceived as very complicated. Uh, following the Kubernetes nautical team, I think that networking should be represented something like that, like this tangled rope dumped somewhere. It sometimes really feels like that. Uh, there are a few networking related Kubernetes resources like service, ingress, network policy. Uh, there are also a few components running inside uh, every Kubernetes cluster providing networking. Um, there is CNI plugin uh, providing basic connectivity between containers. CNI stands for Container Network Interface. Um, so this is for basic connectivity. Uh, there is Kube Proxy providing uh, layer for uh, load balancing and implementing Kubernetes services and endpoints. Uh, there's ingress controller optionally providing layer seven load balancing and implementing ingress resource. 
uh, layers of ingress. There is core DNS providing DNS. Uh, there are a lot of things happening. And uh, I think one of the reasons why this is perceived, Kubernetes is working, is perceived as so complicated is that um, there is no one way to do that. You basically choose all of these components. Uh, you choose CNI plugin. Kube proxy has like default standard canonical implementation, but some CNI plugins provide replacement for it. You choose ingress controller if you need it. Uh, core DNS is also kind of standard, but uh, you often need to configure it. So there are many, many different ways how it can be configured. Uh, and the different solution will provide different uh, capabilities, including different observability capabilities. So different visibility into what's actually happening inside the cluster when it comes to networking. So today I will show what can we achieve with Cilium as um, a CNI plugin for Kubernetes. Okay, so let's introduce our new characters. Well, not that new, really, but uh, EVPF, Cilium, and Hubble. EVPF is, um, you probably will hear that word many times this week. Uh, it's a very hot technology these days, which um, I like to think about it as plugin system for Linux kernel. So EVPF allows you to write code that is sort of injected into Linux kernel in a safe way. And the main use cases for it is uh, observability, networking, and security. Uh, Cilium is it's a CNI plugin, but a very rich and comprehensive CNI plugin. There are many features. Uh, there is there are layer four and layer seven uh, network policies. Network policies are act sort of like firewall for pods inside Kubernetes cluster. Um, there is kube proxy replacement, so um, implementation of services and. Um, low, uh, layer for load balancing. Uh, there is also ingress and service mesh powered by Envoy proxy uh, built into Cilium agent. Uh, so these provide layer seven uh, implementation and load balancing. And Cilium uses eBPF as the underlying technology for networking. So I uh, like different um, plugins based usually on IP tables. Um, Cilium does networking uh, with eBPF. Uh, and there is Hubble. And in a moment, we will see Hubble in action. Um, but Hubble is basically observability layer for Cilium. Uh, there, uh, there is CLI and UI, and it also exposes Prometheus metrics. Uh, and one uh, point before we get into a couple details. Uh, EBPF is widely used for observability and the kind of canonical use case, canonical way how to do that uh, is that um, there is EBPF program that hooks into some event in Linux kernel. It can be a syscall, but can be many other things. It records what's happening in reports that back to the user. And uh, there are multiple tools these days that do some variation of that. Uh, one of them is, for example, Tetragon. Tetragon is uh, focusing on security events. So it's like security observability tool. Um, and this is not Hubble. Hubble sort of uses eBPF for observability, but very indirectly. Hubble is visibility layer for Cilium. So it basically piggybacks on Cilium. Um, Cilium uses eBPF for networking and Hubble just watches what Cilium actually does. Okay, so what Hubble does is Hubble collects flows. Uh, and you might ask, what is a flow? So flow, a flow is a network event. A flow indicates some network transmission. It's a very wide event. It can contain information from all networking players from layer two to layer seven. Uh, it also contains Kubernetes metadata if it's run on Kubernetes, because uh, it actually doesn't have to be run on Kubernetes, but if it is, yeah, we have all Kubernetes metadata. Uh, we can also have things like trace ID in the flow. If the applications are instrumented with trace context propagation, then Hubble will automatically extract 
trace ideas into individual flows. And Hubble also um, exposes Prometheus metrics. So here you can see uh, example Helm configuration, how uh, metrics can be enabled in Helm. Uh, they are enabled, uh, different groups are, can be enabled independently, so different groups correspond to different protocols and uh, like some, um, there, are, there are a few other groups. Um, there are also, LABs are also enabled um, separately, so you can control cardinality in that way. Uh, and this is it. And no additional component is needed uh, when installing the CNI plugin that you need for connectivity, you can uh, automatically get metrics about network activity and configure them uh, to your needs. Uh, there are also a few other options you can enable for convenience, uh, like service monitor or uh, automatically um, created config maps with Grafana dashboards. And there are exemplars. Uh, so if application is instrumental with trace context, then Hubble will extract trace ID into flows and the metrics will actually contain, um, exemplar, contain exemplars uh, to these traces. This is, this is enabled with uh, enable open metrics option. Okay, so let's look into how uh, Hubble actually works, how this actually looks like. We have a Selenium agent, this blue box there. Selenium agent runs on every node and it injects eBPF programs onto the node. Um, this green box are eBPF programs that are injected into kernel and provide uh, network connectivity. Uh, we call it data path. Um, eBPF stores uh, its state in BPF maps. BPF maps are basically like hash maps or there are different kinds of maps, but basically a way to store state of BPF programs. And Cilium reads these BPF maps uh, through the perf ring buffer. There are also a few other components inside Cilium agent. There is Envoy proxy and DNS proxy for handling um, layer seven traffic, layer seven routing and providing visibility. Uh, both optional, uh, you can enable that if you need uh, layer seven routing and visibility uh, or not. Uh, also metadata cache that is used for uh, identity, for identifying endpoints that are communicating with each other in Kubernetes, that would be Kubernetes metadata. And there's Hubble, and Hubble is this purple box over there. Uh, Hubble runs inside Cilium agent and collects all of that, collects data from uh, proxies for layer seven visibility, uh, from uh, identity cache for Kubernetes metadata, um, from uh, Cilium monitor that collects them, collects events from BPF maps uh, for the basic network visibility. Uh, Hubble parses packets that it collects and stores them in the ring buffer. It's a ring buffer implemented in Go. And then um, it exposes network events in two ways, gRPC endpoint with raw flows and metrics. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so um, gRPC endpoint can be queried by either uh, UI or C CLI through component we call Hubble Relay, which is like centralizing um, centralized components, collecting data from different from all the nodes. Um, and metrics can be these are like regular open metrics metrics, so they can be uh, collected by any Prometheus or Grafana instance. All right, so. Uh, now we have an overview of that. Let's debug, uh, let's debug some networking problem. Uh, so we'll, I will walk through a problem with communication between services. Uh, I won't do it live because I don't trust computers that much, especially when it comes to networking, but uh, I will walk through uh, like debugging scenario. So we have a new demo app deployed to the cluster or maybe not a new one, maybe old app redeployed new version of an app deployed to the cluster. It's a very, very simple app. There is front-end pod with front-end service and 
to worker pods with worker service. User is talking to front-end service, um, front-end pod is talking to worker service on, um, it's calling it by, by its name, by worker on port 8080. And if we try to call uh, front-end service as a user, uh, let's say it's port forward to localhost, uh, we are getting an error. Uh, we are getting an error that front-end can talk to, work, to, to the worker. Um, if we open uh, Grafana dashboards that we have, we can see something like that. Uh, what we can see that, uh, we can see a spike in, that, in graph with uh, DNS errors. So, uh, this is something that we can get alerted on uh, if it's suitable in this environment. Um, but we can also query uh, Hubble CLI for more details. And uh, we can query Hubble CLI with filters, filtering by various Kubernetes metadata like namespace. And in this case, we are identifying apps by labels. And that could be like work of name, but yeah, uh, we, can, we can query by labels. Um, and we can we query um, the endless responses to this app. These are only responses coming from uh, core DNS in Kube proxy in, in uh, Kube system namespace. Uh, and we can see some interesting things there. First of all, we can see how actually DNS happens in Kubernetes. We see that there are both uh, a and quadruple A queries. So these are IPv4 and IPv6 DNS queries. And we can also see that there are queries for different domains. Uh, there is domain worker demo app uh, SBC cluster local, and then um, the, it's shortening. And we can see that we are getting this uh, this non-existent domain errors. And if we look closer, uh, we can spot that, yeah, actually we made a typo and the worker is, uh, is spelled by with double R. So yeah, we are actually calling incorrect domain. domain. Um, let's fix it. Let's fix it. Uh, this is actually configured in the front-end deployment. So in front-end deployment has um, environment variable with an incorrect uh, address. We can easily fix it. But we, when we fix it, we, and we call uh, front-end service again, we get exactly the same error. And what now? Uh, we can take a look at another Grafana uh, graph uh, showing drops. And what, uh, what are drops? So uh, when there is some network connection happening in Linux kernel, uh, it can be either forwarded uh, by uh, eBPF implementation in this case or dropped. And here we see some spike in dropped connections with reason policy denied. So policy denied tells us that this connection was denied by network policies. Um, network policies are generally are acting like um, firewalls for pods, and it's generally considered a good practice to configure network policies for uh, connectivity in the cluster. When we have spike in uh, drops uh, because of policy denied, that means that may mean that there was an attack in a cluster. But very often that actually means that we have misconfigured resources, and for example. Um, uh, some policy is missing or there is something incorrect in the uh, resources labels, for example. So um, let's, um, if we try to uh, investigate, uh, uh, sorry, uh, here, uh, if we try to investigate with Hubble, um, we can see, we can query Hubble CLI, uh, again with same filters and verdict dropped. 
And we can see, again, some interesting things. We can see that there are retries. It's not only one request. We made only one request, but there are retries. So uh, there are a few different connections made. And that's because the network is generally considered unreliable. And in general, when we make TCP connections uh, and it fails, there are retries always built in. So there are a few retries. We can see that they are happening with exponential backoff. So the first retry is after a second or so, and the second one after two seconds, and then there are and some other ones four and eight seconds later. And we see that uh, we actually have, like, it colored in red uh, output that there were flows that were dropped and policy denied. Uh, let's take a look at the network policy for, uh, for the front end. Uh, and we can see that, oh, well, we made actually the same typo in the network policy for front end because, well, we were just copy pasting it, right? So uh, the network policy for front end doesn't allow to connect to worker, to proper worker service. Uh, let's fix it. And when we fix it, we, again, are getting same, exactly the same error. Uh, what happens this time? We have another graph in Grafana that show us missing uh, syntax. So um, in the TCP protocol, as we saw earlier, um, we, um, how the communication starts is that first there is uh, something sent with syn flag, and there is, uh, and what we are expecting after that is a response with syn ac flag. TCP protocol has this concept of flags where the host, whole communication and whole TCP life cycle is controlled and is managed with using this flag so that we know uh, when there is something unexpected happening. And how we expect communication to start is that we have this so-called freeway handshake so that there is um, request with sin, response with sin ack, and then is another request with ack, and then communication continues. Uh, here we have um, requests with um, with sin without ack, without sin ack. and if we investigate that with have a CLI again, we can see that um, we can filter uh, in Hubble CLI by protocol filter all TCP traffic. So this is entire TCP traffic that involves front end up. And what we can see that, we can, we can see indeed that it sends uh, a few um, requests with TCP flux in. Um, again, we see retries. It's not just one request, a request there are retries. Uh, and there's nothing obvious telling us what's wrong. There is no word error, nothing read as it was in previous examples, but it tells us exactly what is happening. It tells us exactly that some of the, one of front end pods is trying to reach one of the worker pods on port 8000. Now, well, um, if you remember, we uh, configured uh, our front end deployment to hit work and or port 8080 and worker is exposing port 8080 so where this port 8000 came from we actually didn't didn't want to call it well it came from the service it turns out uh, missing sins uh, can mean a missing synax sorry sins without synax can mean a few things but very common thing is that the port is just incorrect, the app is not listening on the port we are calling. And uh, here we can see the mistake that the uh, worker service is configured to um, actually listen on port 8080, but on port uh, bounding to port 8000 on the pot. This is a mistake. And if we fix that mistake, we finally can fix our problem and finally front end and worker pots can communicate. So yeah, that was a quick walkthrough. Um, What's, what's possible. And uh, we use Hubble CLI here a lot. Uh, and we, we love CLIs, but uh, we thought um, 
wouldn't it be convenient to query flows directly from Grafana if we already have um, metrics in Prometheus that we can graph in Grafana dashboards, and we are doing that. And if you are familiar with Grafana UI and you paid attention to previous slides, you might have noticed something that would suggest that we can actually do that. Uh, when I showed the table with flows, this table was actually table in Grafana. Uh, so Grafana has uh, this concept of plugins. Uh, Grafana has data source plugins and panel plugins. And there are many built-in data source plugins. The most common ones are like for Prometheus, for Tempo, for Loki. But you can write your own data source plugin with your own data source. And me and my team thought like, hey, we have this Hubble thingy. Let's do that. Let's write a Grafana plugin for Hubble that would allow to query flows directly with very granular filters. So yeah, um, we, this is a sneak peek into what's coming up because this plugin is actually not released yet. Uh, that will be. Uh, we, we are working on uh, Grafana plugin for, for Hubble data source. Um, Grafana provides great tutorials and libraries for developing plugin. Actually, following the tutorial, after following the tutorial, we get um, a scaffolding uh, where even without much front end knowledge, it's kind of clear what we need to do and how it looks like. Uh, how uh, backend data source plugins look like uh, is that there's front end component that's written with TypeScript and React, and back end components uh, written in Go uh, using Grafana plugin SDK that allows us to, for example, uh, query gRPC endpoints uh, that Hubble exposes. Um, there can be multiple underlying data sources in data source plugin. But what I mean by that is that we can actually connect, uh, for example, Hubble gRPC endpoint and Prometheus and Tempo inside one data source plugin, which is super convenient for correlating things, like, for example, uh, in our case, correlating, um, correlating metrics, traces, and raw flows that uh, have trace ID. And um, all visualizations uh, in, in Grafana can be, are basically available and uh, can be, can be uh, handled by, uh, by our own plugin. So this will be a quick preview. Uh, this is how the plugin, uh, this is how uh, it looks like. Uh, we can query uh, flows with very granular filters. Uh, same as we would do that in CLI. You can see this mysterious process ancestry is service map tabs, and let's keep them mysterious for now. If you are curious about what's that, then feel free to hit me up during KubeCon. Uh, I'm available for time. And to learn more, uh, to get started with Hubble, uh, you, I would recommend uh, following tutorials in Cilium documentation, observability section, and uh, Isovalent and Grafana announced partnership today. So if you want to see more use cases for using Hubble and Grafana for uh, debugging various issues, including layer seven or hardware issues, then there is a blog post available and also hands-on demo available on GitHub. So I encourage you to check out that. Thank you very much.